Welcome back. You're tuning in to Financial Fitness Northwest. And in studio now, um, we have Luis Garcia. Um, he is the CEO and president of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Puget Sound. Lewis has been with Big Brothers, Big Sisters for 13 years, serving in an executive position at three different agencies. In his current position as president and CEO of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, he is responsible for achieving aggressive growth goals and managing a 3.2 million agency uh, that provides mentoring for children facing adversity, positively changing their lives for the better and forever. At all three Big Brothers, Big Sisters agencies, uh, Lewis has been successful in increasing revenues and the number of youth served and launching a sustaining revenue generating used goods donation operations. Wow, that was a lot of words. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. I'm not done yet. Hold on, you guys. <laughs> Previous to his work with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Lewis worked in uh, university housing management and higher education. Lewis holds a bachelor's degree in advertising, a master's degree in counseling, and a master's degree in entrepreneurship all from the University of Florida. Lewis is one of the 10 CEOs from across the country appointed to Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America, Nationwide Leadership Council, and serves as the chair of the National Marketing Committee. Lewis enjoys living in Issaquah with his wife, Courtney. Courtney, right? Okay. And their two boys, Rylan and Dylan. You have a Dylan? I have a Dylan. I got a Dylan. All right. <laughs> it's a girl, though. It's I, wonderful. It's yeah. a beautiful name. <laughs> it is a beautiful name. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You're, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> delighted to be here. We're delighted to have you. So can you just start off with sharing with us about the Big Brothers, Big Sisters mission? Absolutely. So if you think about kids, right, mm -hmm. inherent in every child is the potential to succeed in life. And sometimes there's obstacles put in front of them. And what we do at Big Brothers, Big Sisters is put a mentor in their life to help them overcome those obstacles, to fulfill their potential, and to achieve success in life. And that's it in a nutshell. Uh, and if you can imagine, kids have all different kinds of obstacles and hurdles and no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. They get born into tough situations, tough neighborhoods, uh, just things happen. Uh, and, and if that guiding light can be a mentor. Uh, and, and what's neat is we have these amazing mentors all across King and Pierce counties, you know, thousands each year, uh, and they just show up, and and they they're a friend, and they can say the same thing a parent would mm -hmm. to a kid, and the kid will listen to the mentor, not the parent. You know, mm -hmm. as parents, we know that it goes in one ear and out the other ninety percent of the time. I know. Uh, but when a, most kids just look up to their mentors and say, "I, I don't want to disappoint my friend. Uh, this person's part of my life," and and we get a lot of things done together. Wow, that's great. That's awesome. So what communities do you serve? The Puget Sound Agency serves all of King and Pierce counties. Okay, so, so big. That's a big that's area. A, yeah. Big geography, right? And, and a little sprinkling in Kitsap County as well. Wow. And we've been here for uh, 60 years doing it. 60? Wow. That's I, a long time. I know. I didn't know it was I didn't either. so old. That's <laughs> been yeah, around I so long. I haven't. No, 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 <laughs> no. I can tell by looking at you that... Hasn't been that long. <laughs> oh. Um, so what exactly does Big Brothers and Big Sisters achieve with the work that you do? I mean, obviously you're impacting the lives of kids, mm -hmm. but um, you want to share some more with us? Yeah. So when, when kids are in the tough situations and uh, typically a single mom or a single grandma will reach out to us and just say, we need some help, uh, we try and set up the success to be in three main areas, that we want the kids to be uh, successful in their academic space. Mm -hmm. to achieve good grades, to have good attendance, and, and to behave well in schools. Uh, another area is we want the kids to have positive social-emotional development. And so uh, communication with others and self-esteem and confidence and, and, and just relationships with other people. And in the third area we want kids to achieve success in is uh, avoiding risky behaviors. Mm, right? I like that. So uh, yeah. drugs, alcohol, violence. Uh, those kinds of things, we, 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 we ask kids what their attitudes are about them and, and their behaviors so that we can just make sure we give the right coaching so that they make good decisions mm -hmm. along with their mentors. So who, qual I mean, how do you become, a, you know, be able to use your services? Yeah. How is it, a, is, what's the criteria or how do you find the kids? 
the parents mm-hmm. come to us. And, and so we have about 800 kids on our wait list all the time. Oh, wow, my gosh. And, and the majority of those, over 600 of those are boys. Really? Yeah. And, and so the parents come to us looking for help and from all parts of the geography, um, north, south, west, east King County. We have kids coming to us. We have teachers referring kids to us. Uh, and it's word of mouth. Once there's a, po- a great experience that a mom has with, with, with working with big brothers, big sisters, they tell other moms. And then the neighborhood sometimes rally and says, all right, how can we connect with you guys? Um, so the, there's no eligibility criteria that weeds anyone out. But we'll, kids come to us from all different scenarios. Mm. Uh, but just by who comes to us, the majority are low-income families. Uh, just, just serious majority come to us with low income. Um, single parent homes is the majority. Mm. Uh, and our, the kids are facing some kind of adversity, you know, whether it be boys who don't have a male role model or LGBTQ kids who are feeling isolated and, and not knowing how to handle their, their young emotions and their new things. And uh, we serve that population with the mentors and the kids um, and everything in between. Wow. So if you have 800 kids on your wait list, you must be really short on mentors. Is that where the need is then, mostly? The, the need, uh, is we look at it in a couple of ways. Uh-huh. When we put the word out in certain areas, we get the mentors. Uh, we could always use help for men, right? We got 600 boys on the wait list. So all you men out there, and Charlie, I'm looking <laughs> at you too. Uh, but there's something you can think about for yourself or talk to other guys about it. It's a great experience, um, so we do need men. Um, but it's also for us money, right? It's mm-hmm. We have really high standards on our case management and our ongoing coaching. It's part of our process is once a, a mentoring relationship is made, we just don't go say, hey, go do your stuff and be a mentor and have fun. Uh, the, the mentor, the, the, the youth, and a parent has to have a monthly check-in with, with our professionally trained staff Mm-hmm. And, and we do that ongoing coaching for the life of the relationship. Uh, so even if they've been together eight, nine, ten years, they still got to give us a ring, do a check-in, and we help with the coaching. Wow. Oh, so fun. do you, I mean, you must have some sort of training that you give to the mentors to arm them with, like, the right tools to help these kids? or Yeah, we start from the beginning, just helping with uh, coaching and training, uh-huh. uh, even some co- cultural awareness of working with kids who are coming from low income mm-hmm. and because there's some pretty severe poverty that the kids who are coming to us are living in. And many of us have never experienced what that real poverty is and mm-hmm. going to school hungry during the week or just mm-hmm. being surrounded by gangs and violence or other people in their family making bad decisions. And that it's hard to walk into that situation when you want to just go watch ball games and hang out and eat pizza Mm -hmm. so we have to do some coaching and also when your kids turn into teenagers Mm -hmm. things change uh, and we provide some coaching on those transitions Um, and when things happen in the kids lives there's some triggers Um, and so we've learned a lot over the many many years and we keep reinventing ourselves and adding new service delivery options and figuring out how to work with schools differently and, and whether it's elementary school or uh, and hopefully in a bit we can get to our, our program that we've launched here in Bellevue uh, called Mentor You. We just figure out what, what are the community needs and we'll try and be a part of the solution. So what ages do kids come, do you take? And also how many kids do you serve now? From 6 to 18. Okay. So it's pretty much wow. uh, every school age. Yeah. And, and, we're, and we have uh, pretty high numbers of kids that are in middle school. Uh, mm-hmm. But we are finding our space uh, if for high school with our Mentor U program. It's it's targeted with for college and career readiness oh, and nice. workforce mm-hmm. development, and we're bringing one to one mentoring in that space into a classroom space and using technology because you know young folks are real used to technology and they're comfortable with it, and so we're we're building that into how do we engage our mentors and kids with technology, um, and overall we serve over 2,000 kids and mentors each year. And we have a pretty uh, big goal to, to do more than that. Wow. Well, so you just mentioned Mentor You. Is that what yeah. you said? What is that? 
So Mentor U is our college and career readiness oh, okay. uh, mentoring program. Okay. And we launched it at West Seattle High School last year. And we got through that first ninth grade cohort. It was absolute success. And they got to do field trips to some big companies behind the scenes at Starbucks and Microsoft oh. and Hulu and PMI. Oh, cool. And so the students loved it. And we, they got to see all the different kinds of jobs there. Uh, and then this fall, we're launching it with two classes at Interlake High School in Bellevue. Mm. And the goal there is the same. So, uh, provide a mentor to kids who need it from ninth to 12th grade and the two years after high school, those two tough years. Uh, and our goal is that they're career or college ready Perfect. Uh, after they get out of high school and they have a plan and they have confidence that they can do it. That's cool. That so is, cool. is the mentor for that program different than the mentor it for your main services? Yeah. So, so we want to have options for people. You uh-huh. know, some folks have the time on weekends and evenings to say, hey, I'm going to spend a few hours a month uh, w- with a really cool kid, and they have time to do that. Uh, oftentimes, professionals will say, I have my own kids and family on weekends and evenings, and so we, we have this Mentor You as an option because during the week it's uh, communication in an online portal when the students are in class. Oh, and then the mentors in a professional setting, and we have partnerships with the different companies that have that culture of philanthropy and providing their employees with uh, an option to do good in the community. And we even have elementary school options to do lunch with a a kid at Stevenson Elementary in Bellevue, a lunch buddy program once a week. Oh wow! And just go in and have lunch and talk homework, life, those kinds of things. So we want to have options. So yeah. We have mentors coming from uh, different situations, and when we recruit men, you know, we give a ex- bunch of excuses, right, for everything. Uh-huh. And so uh, <laughs> we 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 say, you know, uh, we get it, and I'm a big brother to a, a really a young man who just graduated high school in the spring in, in a mentor you program. Uh, we say, if you have your own kids, um, you you might find that you get to spend more time with your kids, and we hear that from the men a lot. Is you know. I'm spending time with this young person who may not have a father in his life, and I realize how important that is, so I end up changing some of my own lifestyle to make sure that I spend time with my own kids. And that happens more often than you would think. That's so cool. That's amazing. That's so cool. So do you have, like, a good story that you can tell, share with us? Gosh, there's thousands of stories. Aside from, you know, my little brother, who I'm so proud of. I met him when he was a skinny little ninth grader. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he'd tell me he'd be the first in his family just to finish high school. Wow. And he is so brilliant and smart. And he was surrounded by gangs and violence and 100% free and reduced lunch school. Um, So it's a very Mm low-income community. And he graduated fifth in his class. Wow, he had so cool. Did dual enrollment at the community college, and he started the University of Florida uh, this fall. Hmm, I uh, think I read in your I, bio yeah, that you old. went to the yeah, University I'm of hey, Florida. Hey, hey. <laughs> I see a theme here. Did you have uh, some influence on that? I may have said a few positive <laughs> things about that campus, uh, but he, you know, I wouldn't be able to get into that school now. He's so smart and wants to be an engineer, and our conversations are different now. It's yeah. You know, financial decisions. Mm-hmm. That's the as a coming out of high school and going to college on your own. That's I think that's what we talk about the most now is managing finances and his jobs and savings and tuition and how are you gonna eat? Yeah. <laughs> Those kinds of things. So wow. I can imagine like you're probably in relationship with him and you have been for so many years that I mean you're probably will always be in relationship with him. I mean, does that seem to be the case with a lot of people? That's right. It's uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, this young person becomes part of the family fabric, mm-hmm. and 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 maybe not every day being part of the family because we don't expect that time commitment. But just to to know you can check in with someone, and that someone's waiting for you to check in or looking up to your advice, uh, and and yeah, the young people become part of the family. And my kids know who who Monty is, and mm-hmm. um, it, it's just you know like a cousin. That, yeah, that, that that's able to hang out and do neat things. That's so cool. So in when you're a mentor in the program, are you it when you're spending time with your little brother or little sister, are you doing that just one-on-one with them typically or do they kind of become integrated into your family functions at all? Yeah, the goal is for a really strong one-to-one relationship. Mm-hmm. And and we know it, 
as if we can coach for it to last as long as possible, that's where the biggest impact is in that kid's life, positive impact. And But part of opening up our lives as mentors is introducing them to our lives, our families. Mm-hmm. And so we, it's not a pretty common that we do a lot of things as groups. It's, it's mainly about that one-on-one. But when it's appropriate, you know, it's watching a ball game together or, or a family meal or a holiday. Mm-hmm. That's when things can open up and um, do things together. And, and we have couples matches. You know, if a couple wants to do it together, mm-hmm. uh, that's a good way to nudge a lot of times the men and say, hey, <laughs> we're doing this together. How does that work, the couples matches? So that we assign both uh, pairs in the couple, in the partnership, to, to one child. Oh, okay. And they can do it together. That's cool. Yeah. There you go, couples. There you go. go. I know, that's interesting. (laughs) That's really interesting. Well, do you guys have anything coming up, any big um, events or, or, you know, fundraising things? Well, just last Saturday we had our annual gala and raised just just at the million-dollar mark, which was phenomenal for us. Uh, The first time in our history we've gotten to that point. And um, other than that, we're going to have a graduation ceremony in May. Oh, where our our seat the kids who are seniors we do we want to honor them, uh, and then we'll have a breakfast in their honor coming up in May. Fun! Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so delighted. We're, I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, yeah, we're so glad to hear about uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. When we come back, we're going to be talking about um, the Riley Johnson team market update. And uh, to find out about any topics discussed or guests we've had in studio, you can find us online at www.financialfitnessnw.com.